We are under the lights this evening as we get you set for another edition of baseball on MLB Network. Coming up, we've got a good matchup in store between the New York Yankees and the New York Mets. Going to be an interesting contrast in styles in this one as one of baseball's hardest throwers goes head to head with a top finesse arm. Next. Jacob DeGrom, a right-hander from Florida, gets the ball as the starter here. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? Hey, when you look up the definition of rock solid for a starting pitcher, this is your kind of guy. Career ERA under three, just knows how to get it done, controls the running game, limits the amount of damage, and more importantly, he knows how to win, and that's why it's going to be fun to watch him work in this one here today. Here's Brett Gardner now. He'll get us started in this one under the lights. First offering on its way. Now a slider down the middle but laid off. The wind up and the 0 1. Gets the fastball by him here, and he's in control 0 and 2. Well, I think his eyes lit up when he saw that pitch coming up at his eye level. Oh, you think? If you've got a good fastball like he does, that location can be really effective. It looks so tempting to the hitter, but making contact on that pitch can be very tough. Conforto has the best view of this one, so he'll take it for the first down. With that, here's a look at the Yankees' starting lineup. Anybody catch your eye, Dan? Well, Matt, we all know it. The man to watch, Giancarlo Stanton. You know, it's always interesting to see a hitter's lifetime numbers against a pitcher and vice versa. Well, in this matchup, he has some pretty impressive ownage, as they say. Four home runs in past that bats, so that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Here's big Aaron Judge. In previous duels with DeGrom, he's one for five. First pitch coming, here it is. Way off balance hack that time, good for the first strike. Judge, playing here in his age 26 season, he was a first round pick back in the draft of 2013. Yeah, Matt, you cannot miss on your first rounder, and they didn't with this guy. He has turned himself into an absolute superstar. Time to take a look at the umpires in this one. Behind the plate is Mike Fillmore. Hey, you know, D-Roll, Mike Fillmore, he'll give a little bit off the edges, but he gets the respect not only from the pitchers, but from the players because his zone is consistent. Yeah, as long as he's consistent, Dan, I'm okay with Mike Fillmore's zone. If a pitcher's pounding that zone, he wants to give a little bit off the outer edge, I'm okay with that. Striding in, Giancarlo Stanton, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. Ready to deliver, here's the first pitch. In there, no balls and a strike. Well, even though these two teams are in different leagues, they do play each other every year because of the crosstown rivalry, and it's always pretty fun. Yeah, and for the players, Matt, they love it. Not only is there more on the line than usual, like bragging rights, but they're not having to stay at hotels and all that. It's just like a normal home game where they're driving to a different ballpark. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Conforto moves over. He makes the play, and that'll end the inning. So the Yanks go one, two, three. Yankees turned away early. Mets coming to bat. It's the Subway Series on MLB Network. Masahiro Tanaka will be the starter in this one for the Yankees. Dan, any thoughts? Tanaka right now is the best of all of their starting pitchers. Good fastball, 92 to 94. Best pitch is the split finger. He'll throw it early. He'll throw it often. If he has the good split, these hitters are in for a long night. And here's the former first-round draft choice, Brandon Nimmo. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first.
Here's the first pitch to him. Good downward action there, and it's 0 and 1. Chased a low ball there, and he's quickly down in the count 0 and 2. Weak grounder down the first baseline. But this will be a foul ball, and it's still 0 and 2. Swing and a miss on the slider, and that's out number one. With a moment here in Flushing Meadows, let's meet the Mets. Who's the one to watch, Dan? Well, you better keep an eye on Robinson Cano as this game moves along. This guy hit over 300 last year, and man, it was impressive. Just hitting over 300 is really something special to look at. He's a consistent hitter. I love watching his approach. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He'll be there again this year if he continues to stay within himself. So the bases are empty with one man gone. And that'll bring in Jeff McNeil. And he starts him out with a strike on the outer half. Softly hit toward the hole. Clips it behind his back. And there's out number two. Stepping in, Robinson Cano. He'll get to take his first cuts here. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Just able to get a piece of that for strike one. Cano waiting on the 0 1. Swing and a liner toward the gap in left center. Oh, and he misses it. Man, I'm not sure what to make of this one. The ball was hit hard, but it looked routine. The only thing I can think of is maybe he lost it in the lights there. That's a tough break. Here's the catcher Wilson Ramos as he'll take a look at a slider here that finds the zone for strike one. He takes his first cuts in this one with a man at first and two away. Hit on the ground out to short. Up with it now is Tulewitzki. Quick throw to Torres to retire the side. Mets leave one. We are still scoreless. Digging in now for the Yankees, Gary Sanchez. In previous duels with DeGrom, he's a 333 hitter. He also has one home run. First offering on its way. Fouled away. Checks his swing, but this will be strike two call. Well, fans of the art of pitching are in for a treat. One of the game's big-time flamethrowers faces a top craftsman here today. And you're going to see two different mindsets from both offenses, Dan. Facing the power guy, he's going to come at you. He's going to pitch to his strengths and not your weakness. And on the flip side, the finesse guy is going to try and keep everyone off balance. And I want to see what off-speed pitch he has working. You know, Dero, that's one of the beautiful things about the game of baseball. Good pitchers come in all different shapes and sizes, and they come with all different type of weapons. We're going to see one flamethrower and one guy that throws below the speed limit.
First delivery to him on the way. A strike taken up in the zone. Hey, there's no waiting around trying to work this guy into deep counts and get into the bullpen. This is a mid-90s fastball guy who loves that pitch and is aggressive and comes right at you. I would assume the offense is going to have a similar approach. The windup and the 0-2 pitch. Now a swing and a fly ball. And they can't run it down. Still looking for our first hit in the ball game. A ball and two strikes now. He takes strike three called on the fastball. Couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. Now batting, Luke Voigt will attempt to put the ball in play for a change here with the first two guys going down on strikes to start the inning. First pitch coming, here it is. And here's a fastball called for strike one. Smoke toward the hole, and that is through into right field for a single. Well, this was a good start for the pitcher. First five guys, five up, five down, but the number six hitter proved to be a little bit more difficult, and that's a bullet hit. Yeah, absolutely right there, Dan. Just a nice A-B by the six-hole guy after watching his first five brethren take a seat. Here's Troy Tulowitzki now. As he takes a cold strike at the knees, it's 0-1. Tulowitzki playing here in his age 34 season. This is his 12th season in the big league, so he's put together a really nice career to this point. Yeah, Matty, no kidding right there. I'll tell you what, the grind to get to the big leagues is so hard. Guys just want, they just want to spend a month. At and we'll have to leave it there as this is strike three, and that will retire the side. Yanks leave one. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Stepping up to the plate, Michael Conforto, as they'll have five, six, and seven here to start the home half of the second. Infield in the overshift here, now the pitch. Here's a slider to start things out, looked at for ball one. Hit hard to the right side. Foul. He wasn't fooling anybody with that fastball. He barreled it up nice right there. He's just got to find a way to keep it fair. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Outside, 2 and 1. He's fallen behind now, 3 and 1. Well, that sets up a big pitch right here, Matt, because you don't want to lose the leadoff guy in a scoreless game. It's tough to work around the leadoff walk. Here's a bouncer foul to the left side, and the count will move ahead now to three and two. Now the payoff pitch home. Gets him swinging. He struck him out. All right, here's how the Bronx Bombers are going to set up defensively today. And guys, what I want you to focus on today is this is one of the new age teams in the game that really rely on statistics and the numbers. And the numbers tell them that they're a better team defensively, moving guys around and shifting as much as they can. So the base is empty here with one away. And into bed next will be J.D. Davis. Here's the first pitch to him. Trying to jam him with the first pitch slider, but it's in a bit too tight for ball one. And a 
strike one, one. to even the count. One and one. Count is one and two now. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. Down the left field line and deep. And that will end up a foul ball. Another 1 2 delivery. Slow little roller to third. Andahar brings it in. Throw on to first, two gone. Box Dominic Smith will try to make something happen with two gone in the bottom of the second. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. And he takes ball one. Tanaka has a reputation as a strike thrower, although that doesn't often result in a ton of strikeouts. A typical start may find him with a low walk total and the ball in play a lot. Matty, he's what they call today one of those pitch to contact kind of guys. He has good stuff, not great stuff. He relies a lot on his defense. And one of the keys, he's not afraid to throw the ball in the strike zone. With that said, he needs some defense behind him because he's not going to get a whole lot of swings and misses. And he'll just watch the splitter here, two and one. Into the windup. Here's the two and one pitch. This ball will be chopped foul. Tanaka gets the sign. We'll try to put him away here on two and two. Grounded up the first baseline, but a foul ball as it holds it two and two. Bottom of the second here with no score. Hit hard to the right. Foul. Never tempted to swing at that ball down low. It's ball three. I got to commend him for being a really tough out right now. Not everyone will battle like this with two outs and nobody on. Waved at and missed for the third out. Not much of a chance at hitting that one, and the inning is over. Down in order go the Mets. We'll move to the third with no score. And that'll bring up Glaber Torres as we are all set to begin the third inning in this one. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. That one bends into the zone. A strike on the breaking ball. Yanked the slider across that time. Laid off for a ball. A ball and two strikes. Well above the letters with the fastball that time. Boy, if you're going to throw a pitch like that to this guy, you have to make sure it's up above the zone like that. He can't do a whole lot with that, but if it were a little lower, he can and will make you pay big time. So the breaking ball locked him up there. Torres is retired to kick off the inning. Next for New York, Masahiro Tanaka. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. And a fastball is in there for strike one. Bases are empty, one man out. Heading out towards shallow right. Conforto coasts under it, two gone. Back to the top of the order now. And up next, the left handed hitting Brett Gardner. First pitch coming. Here it is. 
And it's fouled away. Third inning, no score to this point. Line shot to third, and the side is retired. One, two, three, go the Bombers. Home half of the third coming up, no score. Digging in, Ahmed Rosario as we move on to the bottom of inning number three. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. And this is taken outside for ball one. In there, and it's even at one. One one waves and misses for strike number two. Nope. There's ball two as the slider dips below the zone. I like that they went away with that pitch right there. They really tried to tie him up on that previous pitch, so he was probably what we call inside conscious. He didn't get a strike there, but I'm guessing he was looking for another ball in. That's a hit, the first of the game for the Mets. Hey, right here, anytime a leadoff hitter gets on in front of the pitcher, it puts the defense on notice. You're going to see the third baseman creeping in. You're going to see the first baseman crashing, trying to get that out at second base. But if not, make sure of one. Standing in now, Jacob DeGrom. And he'll try to bunt that man to second, but this one kicks foul. And they'll indeed have the pitcher squaring around as he puts this one down. And he's safe. No, he's in there. Well, he took a risk with the decision to throw the second instead of taking the sure out at first. Not sure if someone was yelling for him to go to second, but we know now it was the wrong call. Coming to the plate now, Brandon Nimmo. And he could give his guys an early lead if he can come through here. Lead there at second. Here's the pitch. Trying to give himself up here, but this is foul, so the runners will return. Ready with the nothing and one pitch. And this misses the outside corner, so it's knotted up at one and one. Pickoff move to second, and he'll get back in standing. The 1 1 is going to be a sacrifice attempt as he gets it down. Torres at the bag, but he'll put this in his pocket and be content with just the one out. That was kind of a high degree of difficulty play that time. You see the off balance throw to second base, and he couldn't get a lot on it, but they did get the out. Jeff McNeil will be the next to take a turn. And a slider is way low, but a good job there to knock this one down. Bottom of inning number three, nothing, nothing our score. Ah. 
And the sinker is over here, and that evens things at one. Ready with the 1-1 one -one pitch. Hit hard, but foul. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. Hit on the ground to third. And there's a base hit as the runner will score from third, and that gives the Mets a 1-0 lead. Boy, that has to feel good as a hitter, D. Where you get that base hit to give your team the lead, you have to feel good when you get down to first base. Yeah, it's just a nice approach. You see him turn to his boys right there and get fired up with the dugout. 100%, not trying to do too much, able to quiet the moment down, center himself, and come through in a big spot. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Fastball in there for a called strike. Nope. Missed That's low and inside with it. One and one. Not a surprise to see that low splitter there. Anything with downward movement like that is going to be at the top of the list in a double play situation. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Gardner is there. Makes the play, and there are two gone now. And no tag at second. He'll head back there with two away now. Stepping into the box, Wilson Ramos. He's set, and the pitch. Slider finds the zone for a strike. Slap hard the opposite way. That's in there. Base hit. And a good throw will wind up holding that runner at third, so the bases become loaded now with two gone. So our situation has the bases loaded. Two men out. And up next, the left-handed hitting Michael Conforto. First delivery to him on the way. Taken, and that one catches the bottom part of the strike zone. Getting that first pitch strike is really important when you're dealing with the bases loaded behind you. Good job to give himself the advantage there. Nope. Awfully close with the slider there, but it's one and one. Backdoor breaking ball just missed right there. It's such an effective pitch if you can hit the corner with it, but no dice this time. The 1-1. Ah. Strike two is that's taken on the one outside one. part of the plate. Line hard. Foul. From the stretch, the one two. two balls. To two, two balls strikes. and two strikes now. Boy, his pitch count has really spiked here in this inning. He's up to over 50 already. The two two. Now a ball lined to the left side, but foul. Two and two, here it is. And that misses, so it's a full count, three and two. For the guy on the mound, this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. Definitely laboring at the moment. Too close for comfort, and he did a good job just to make contact. He sent the 3 2, lifted the other way out to left center. He leaps, but he can't get it. It's down for extra bases. 
He's in at second safely as they also score a pair of runs on the play. Yeah, with the bases loaded, he didn't walk a run in, so instead he makes the cardinal mistake of putting it right in the heart of the plate. And when you do that, you're going to pay the price, and that's exactly what happens with a two-RBI double. J.D. Davis the next to bat as he takes a cold strike on the black. It's 0-1. Even though we're still in the early going, I think this game's at a tipping point right now. They've got a chance to put this game out of reach, but if they can't score any more here, the other guys feel like the door's still open. Behind 0-2 now. Here's the 0-2. And the slider is way low, but a good job there to knock this one down. On the ground a second for Torres. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as this side is retired. So they pick up three runs on four hits, no errors, and a couple of men left. On now to the top of inning number four. It's the Mets three and the Yankees nothing. Riding in once again, Aaron Judge. He'll try to get it going here to begin the fourth. Hey, we're still in the early stages in this one. They're only down by a couple of runs, but it's really key for this leadoff guy to try to get on and get a big inning started. This guy has been throwing the ball so well, and that's exactly why. He has such a feel for that secondary pitch. He can flip it over whenever he wants and get back in the count. And he'll make the count. Oh, check that! He didn't look it into his glove, and the ball drops in. Well, in his defense, he did have to go a long way to get there, but that's not the problem. The problem is, once he arrives, he doesn't catch the dang ball. He knows as well as anybody that he should have brought that one in, and it's going to cost him an error. We'll see if the pitcher can pick him up. Jim Carlos Stanton now. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. Fly out in his first at bat, so make him 0 for 1 so far. A swinging strike, and now it's 0-2. Really deceptive changeup there. Very well executed. It looks like it just sort of dies when it gets close to the plate. 0-2, here it is. Nope. Hung the slider there, but laid off for ball one. Talk about frustrating as a pitcher. You make a great pitch like that, the guy just lays off of it. That barely missed the zone. Now a swing and a miss, and Stanton is down on strikes for round number one. Boy, there's nothing like seeing a good power pitcher that has a good fastball. And what does he do? He just throws this good fastball right by, brings the express. No chance to put that ball in play. In now, Gary Sanchez. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. And he fires in a strike this time to make it one ball and one strike. Judge leads off second with one gun in the inning. Ground ball sent back up the middle. Backhanded in time to first and there are two away. And this is not an easy play when you have to range to your right. He really didn't have a chance to get his feet set so this is all arm nicely done. Here's Miguel Andujar now. And he is frozen on a good curveball that started at his hip at strike one. Runner in scoring position with two gone. Swing and a miss on the slider, and he's quickly behind. Nothing in two. You know that nasty changeup's lurking right here. If I'm in the batter's box, I have to tell myself to stay back. I have to take pole side out of the equation. Where that changeup's going to beat me. Curveball locks him up. Strike three, and that's the third out. One left for the Yankees. They trail in this one, three nothing. Just about set to go for the last of the fourth. But before we do that, here's Heidi Watney. Matt, during the break, I caught up with Mickey Calloway, the Mets skipper, about his lineup's performance so far. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. He said there is nothing prettier than frozen rope after frozen rope, and that is exactly what he's getting right now. 
The data says they've hit eight line drives as a team in this one, some resulting in outs, but obviously that's a good sign for them going forward. All right, thanks, Heidi. So stepping in, Dominic Smith comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ballgame. One of the keys to securing a win, they want to keep the pressure on and try to build that lead as much as they can moving into the later innings. In there for strike 1, 0 and 1. And he gets around on one and hits it high and deep to straightaway right. But he's going to haul this one in on the run as he winds up just shy of the wall for the first down. Into the box now, Ahmed Rosario. He singled and scored in his first appearance in this one. First pitch coming, here it is. A ball and no strikes. Hit on the ground to third. Throw to first will get him. Already two away here in the home court. So bases are empty here with two gone, and that'll bring up the converted shortstop from his days at Stetson University, Jacob DeGrom. First offering on its way. Fought off at the plate as it's chopped foul. Tanaka gets the sign. Here it is on 0-1. Swing, and he pops him up. But this will land untouched. Three runs, four hits. One error in the game for the Mets thus far. Mets pitcher behind at the plate with a ball and two strikes. Count still at one and two. The one two. is taken for ball two. Got to take your hat off to the pitcher right here. He's throwing a little pesky at bat at him right here. Could have easily just took three pitches and walked back to the dugout. And the slider misses here, so he runs the count full three and two. Brandon Nimmo would be next. Count still full, three and two. Hey, he's got four foul balls in this A.B. right here. He's really making his pitcher grind for everything. And another foul ball. Hit back up the middle. Torres scoops it up, and he'll turn and try the jump throw to first. Throw on to Voigt takes care of him, and the inning is over. Mets go down 1-2-3, but they lead it 3-0. Welcome back to Flushing, Queens. Before we get back to baseball, let's check in with Heidi. Thanks, Matt. I talked with Yankees manager Aaron Boone during the break about the team's offensive performance so far, and he told me he's pretty unhappy with their discipline at the plate in this one. He said they've been chasing at pitches out of the zone all game, which obviously doesn't usually lead to good results. Until they start being more selective with their swings, he said they will continue to struggle. All right. Thanks, Heidi. Into the box. Luke Voigt. He's in to get things going here in inning number five. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Not even close on that swing. No balls and a strike. I'm surprised we're seeing so many late swings on fastballs. If there's one rule of thumb in the game, get to the heater. Slider oh, taken here. Down. One ball, one strike. Oh, and a half swing there on a pitch out of the zone. Indeed, it's strike two. The one two is a fastball that misses. 
hey I appreciate the fact that he's making him throw a few pitches most of his teammates have been hacking at everything that comes their way swing and a miss and he'll start the fifth the same way he ended the fourth with a punch out one away an early look at the line score here tonight as we play the top of the fifth and boy just one lone hit for the visitors this evening as they've been taken to task by this starter. So striding in Troy Tulowitzki he's 0 for 1 thus far. First pitch on its way. Liner towards second. And that finds some outfield grass it's a base hit. Well that's only the second hit he's given up tonight and the first one didn't do any damage so he's not sweating this one at all. They haven't been able to string anything together. At the plate Torres he got called out on strikes his last time through. Yeah Matty and hopefully he got it out of his system especially now he's got to bear down he gets the two strikes in this spot has to put the ball in play. Outside target here and he hits it for strike one. Good breaking ball there laid off for the second strike. Hey as a hitter right here you can't be leaning out over. I know those first two pitchers were in the outer half but nothing saying he can't ride a fastball in right here. A pause and the 0 2 and he struck him out and that's eight strikeouts thus far. Man this guy's on his game today not only when he's throwing strikes but how about the amount of strikeouts what's even more impressive no walks up to this point so he's pounding that zone with strikes and he's making these hitters swing the bat. Stepping in now Masahiro Tanaka as with two away he'll swing and miss at the first pitch it's 0 and 1 so far 0 for 1 with a fly out and he fouls this one off set to deliver on nothing in two here it comes this is in the air out to left field McNeil has a beat on it makes the catch and that'll retire the side the Yanks leave one still down three nothing so the lineup flips over and digging in Brandon Nimmo over two on his line thus far. On its way is pitch number 75. Yeah. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. Hit hard to the right side, but foul. Oh, and two count. Here's the pitch. And he popped him up in Duhar in foul ground and no one will track it down. The next 0 2 misses and that'll move it to one and two now. Uh, got him on the good slider there swung on and missed as he's down on strikes for the second time tonight another strikeout for him on the mound and boy is it fun to watch him go about his business ah, no doubt Matty he's one of my favorites mostly because of his stuff you know he can absolutely dominate on any given day because of what he offers up there it's just nasty there aren't many hitters that like to see this guy on the mound into the box now Jeff McNeil on he pops it up but this will land untouched. Started the breaking ball far too inside that time laid off for ball one. And a splitter here but he had a bit too much on it as this bounces up to the plate. One out nobody on. And ooh, he's really given some leeway on the outside edge here two and two now. 
Two balls, two strikes, a crucial count for both pitcher and hitter. So, Dan, what was your approach on the mound in that count? Do you still pitch for the strikeout here? I think one of the keys, Matt, you want to try to initiate contact. The one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to run the count to three balls and two strikes. Whatever you want to throw, throw it over for a strike. So bases are empty here with two gone and set to stand in the fine second baseman Robinson Cano. First pitch coming here it is. Ball one as he lays off below the zone. And he misses again to Cano. It's 2 0 now. That was one of the easiest takes he'll have all year, and it puts him in a great hitter's count. He's got to take advantage of this situation. Two balls and a strike. Hey, he's done an amazing job of settling down. Two innings ago, I thought they were going to run him out of here, but now he's close to posting two shutout innings as a response. Swings through it for strike number two. Bases are empty here with two men out. And he misses this one inside, and that'll run things full three and two. Wilson Ramos would be next if they can keep this inning alive. And that misses ball four, and now the Mets have themselves a two out base runner. be the four hole hitter Wilson Ramos it was a single for him in his last at bat first pitch on its way mine to the right side and that's in there base hit and that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now Hey guys, this, he's not known for being a singles hitter right here, but that's his second knock of the game. And I'm sure he'll take him, but the guys on the other side of the scorecard might be thinking, we really avoided a worse fate. Into the box, Michael Conforto. Yes, he'll take a look at ball one. He's one for two in this one. Set and the 1 0 pitch finds the zone strike one double barreled action in the Yankee bullpen now a lefty and a right hander start to get loose. Tanaka pauses ready with the 1 1 pitch and this will ricochet off of him on the mound. Oh, and he has some trouble with it. And time now to see quite where that got him. And it appeared from up here at least, and his actions on the field confirm it. It looked like it got him on his drive leg, which could be problematic, of course, for him. But from the way he's trying to walk it off, I think he's going to try to continue. Here comes the Yankee manager now up out of the dugout on his way to the mound. And he's going to motion for his bullpen here. That'll do it for the starter tonight. So he'll depart here in the fifth after working just four and two thirds and he's on the hook for the L unless this one turns around. Chad Green answers the call to pitch here in a big spot. He inherits a bases loaded jam but needs just one out to get out of it. J.D. Davis will be the first one to greet him and he'll bat in a big spot here. Bases loaded and two out in the inning. First pitch coming here it is takes this the other way to right and that's in there base hit and the run is in to score from third. Hey D row they're making this guy pay that's three straight singles and a run driven in. Yeah nothing hit extremely hard killing them softly station to station with those knocks.
standing in now Dominic Smith as he'll take a look at a slider that can't make it back to the corner it's ball one he's hitless in his two at bats so far. Looking to minimize the damage here and a fastball runs a bit inside he's down two and oh. Putting himself in a pretty bad situation now on 2 0, and the base is loaded. He basically doesn't have much of an option but to challenge him right here. 2 and 1 after the foul ball there. The 2 1 home. This is on the ground to short. Is he going to get out of this? Over to first. He does get out of it, and the inning is over. Some more of the colorful characters here at the ballpark tonight. Don't touch that remote. More on MLB Network right after this. So the batting order turns over now and set to go. Brett Gardner. He'll start things out in the sixth for a lineup that really hasn't found its groove in this one. Yeah, only two hits so far, Matt, and not very many hard hit balls either. We'll see if they can start making some adjustments. Good fastball down around the knees there, taken for a strike. Hey, he's rolling so far in this one as we head in to middle part of this game. How about 90% of his first pitches have been for strikes? If he continues to do that, he just might finish this one. The wind up and the 0-2 pitch. And he misses there, 1-2. One and two. I have no issue wasting a pitch on 0-2 to try to get a guy to go fishing, but it has to be somewhat tempting. You're not going to get anyone to swing a bat at that pitch. Line to the right side. And this will get through into right, and he's aboard with a single. Into the box now, Aaron Judge. He was able to reach base thanks to an error in his last at bat. First offering on its way. And a high strike to begin the at bat. It's 0 and 1. You can't allow this offense to get going right here. Leadoff man on doesn't kill us. Let's try and roll a double play right here. Let's execute a good pitch down and away. See if we can get a ground ball and rely on your defense a little bit. And it's a ball and two strikes now to Aaron Judge. Pretty good discipline right there with two strikes. That's a tough sweeping slider. Not many guys lay off that pitch. Struck him out, and he becomes the ninth strikeout victim thus far. One of the toughest pitches to hit, the straight changeup, right? El Cambio. Hadn't seen it in that entire at bat, and what happens? Gets the string pulled on him right there. Had no chance to put that ball in play. Stepping in now, Giancarlo Stanton. He'll swing and lift a ball foul off to the left and out of play. 0 for 2 for him to this point. On its way, the 0 1 pitch. He swings and misses. Throw down. Is well behind the play. That's an easy stolen base. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt, Matty. The ball isn't carrying well tonight, and we haven't seen any home run, so sometimes you have to try for something else. Now, with seeing a single could be all it takes to push a run across. Slap hard the opposite way. That's in there. Base hit. And the runner from second will stay put at third, so they're runners at the corners now with one away. Nice piece of hitting right there. Looked like the guy on second had to respect it and freeze a little bit. He had to freeze there for a second to make sure that line drive gets down, but eventually does get to third base. Into the box now, Gary Sanchez. Belted high and deep into right center. Conforto going back. See you later. Over the wall, a home run. So a three run shot to right center field as it's trimmed to a 4 3 game now. Miguel Andujar. 
No balls and a strike to count. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. A swinging strike, and now it's 0 and 2. The discipline has just been completely absent from this offense. Seems like they're always finding themselves behind the count, and a big reason why is they're swinging at all kinds of stuff that's not even in the strike zone. The 1 2 is a wave and a miss. He struck him out. That's 10 strikeouts for him now, and I'll tell you, he could rack up quite a few more before he's done. Still a lot of game left in this one. Ready for another shot now, Luke Voigt. He was sat down on strikes in his last at-bat. Yeah, but it was a good changeup, Matty. Good arm action on that pitch. Look for him to try and stay back a little bit more. Let the ball get a little deeper. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to rush a heater right here. High and deep down the left field line. And that will end up a foul ball. Into the windup. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. That misses 1 and 2. You know, Matty, I'm not surprised by that pitch. Raise the eye level a little bit. Maybe we get something bouncing in the dirt right here. Ball 2. Well, that's what you want from your curveball on one and two. You start it in the zone and let it break out of the zone where it can't be punished. Didn't get him to go after it, but the execution was nice. And yet another strikeout here. His 11th of the ball game, and this one ends the inning. Another look at the big blow for the Bombers. A three-run home run. Bottom of the sixth is straight ahead. It's the Mets four and the Yankees three. Coming to the plate now, Ahmed Rosario in his career versus this pitcher. Just a couple of matchups, no hits in two at bats. First pitch coming, here it is. In there, 0 and 1. Liner towards second. That's in for a base hit, and he's two for three. I don't know how he got to that fastball right there. That looked like the old Tommy Hawk approach back in the 60s and 70s getting to that one. In now, Jacob deGrom. And the pitcher is, in fact, bunting here as he puts this one down. Tulowitzki for one. But they won't get two as he beats the relay to first. Uh, he got the bunt down, but he didn't deaden it enough. Really good job by the first baseman to charge in and make a good throw to second to get the lead runner. Digging in to try it again, Brandon Nimmo. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. From the stretch. Starts him out with a changeup off the plate for ball one. The intent with that changeup away was one thing and one thing only. Get a double play ball. Nice job to lay off it at the plate, though. One and one to the Mets leadoff hitter. The one one home makes him swing and miss on a ball out of the zone for strike two. In a double play situation, that's the location you want a guy to swing at. More than likely, he's going to beat it into the ground. In the dirt here, but it won't skip away far enough for the runner to advance. A line shot to third base, and the runner gets back. No double play. Ready once again, Jeff McNeil. Lifetime against this pitcher. Not a big sample size, 0 for 1. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Grounded foul toward the coaching box at third.
one and one. one, ball, one and the reason he's working away so much here is because he's got that big hole on the right side of the infield to worry about with the first baseman holding the runner on. It's always smart to pitch into the defense you have behind you. This is line to left and that'll get down for a base hit. for another chance Robinson Cano he's 0 for 2 in the ball game so far looking to keep this a one run game the pitch and this is up and in ball one and some action out in the Yankee bullpen now as a right hander starts to loosen up. The set and the 1 0. A high fastball is in there. You know, if I'm the hitter right here, I'm like, okay, you want to come get some early in the count? I was about to wait you out, but now game on. On the ground to the right side. Oh, and he can't come up with it. And the recovery is too late as he's able to beat the throw to first. Hey, not a bad pitch right there. Off speed pitch down in the zone. You thought he would set that up pretty well. The previous pitch was a real good fastball up. Yeah, I think the hitter was sitting all over that one, Dan. I really do. He saw that fastball up for show. I think he thought to himself, here comes the off speed. Stepping in now, Wilson Ramos. As the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for ball one. He's two for three and looking for more here. One and oh, here it is. Cold strike as the slider gets the outside corner. DeGrom, the runner at third, McNeil on second, Cano at first, two out in the inning. Shin high, that's taken for a ball. Two and two to the Mets catcher. Takes this the other way to right. And he will deliver one of the biggest at-bats of the night. It's a base hit. And the runner scores from third as they extend their lead. Hey, there's a good job of battling right there, d -Row. Pitcher had the advantage with two outs, two strikes. You're one pitch away, and boy, what a terrific piece of hitting right there. Yeah, that's a great job right there. Some guys are not afraid to hit with two strikes. They'll take that pitcher deep in the count, feeling comfortable about it. That's the type of hitter this guy is, and he was able to come through. Into the box now, Michael Conforto. As the first pitch to him is swung on and missed for strike one. Lifetime versus this arm. He's one for five. Well above the letters with the fastball that time. Tries to go the other way as this is in the air to left field. And he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away, and that ends the inning. So one run here on four base hits, no errors, and three left. Seventh inning coming up. The Mets lead it 5-3. to three. Welcome back to City Field in Flushing. Getting set for the seventh inning now with the Mets out on top. But first, let's check out the game summary through the first six innings of baseball. Now at the plate, Troy Tulowitzki. He'll lead it off here as we begin inning number seven. Even though we're moving into the back end of this game, they're only down by a couple of runs. You know that old slogan, a bloop and a blast. They could certainly use that right now. And Tulowitzki can't come up with that one as he falls behind 0-2 now. 
I'll tell you, we're in the later stages of this ball game, but his fastball is still coming out of his hand with plenty on it. Uh, and he's just rolling right now, and even dozen strikeouts for him in the ball game. The bottom third of the lineup hasn't put up a lot of resistance in this one. Pretty much has been sure outs other than that one hit. That really puts a lot of pressure on other guys to make stuff happen. These aren't the guys you usually count on, but it certainly helps if they can do something productive. Turned on down the line. And he tries for the backhand reach at third, but he gets by the gloves down the line. The throw into second, but he'll be in there with a double. As we take a look at his numbers, a couple of things jump out at you. And here's the thing from a pitcher's perspective. You look at this line and you think, wow, he's been sitting guys down all game long, and that's true. But on the flip side, his pitch count is up there. You have to wonder if he might be starting to get a little bit tired in this one. Yeah, and in today's game, everyone seems to want to err on the side of caution in terms of pitch counts. Now the slider gets the call in the bottom part of the zone. That's in there and he's deep in the hole now 0 and 2. In today's game of seeing so many guys strike out and not worry about it. I'd love to see a little two strike approach right here. Maybe shorten up a little bit and try and four speed something the other way. Working for the punch out and the offering. Line to the right side and that's in there base hit and they won't risk it at third so they're at the corners now with only one away as we take a look at his numbers a couple of things jump out at you definitely Matt he's been throwing it by guys the entire game but that leads to some high pitch counts and that's the case here after that hit you have to wonder if he's starting to get a little bit fatigued yeah and in today's game everyone seems to want to err on the side of caution in terms of pitch counts. Now time is called and this could very well be to buy a few more pitches for those relievers. Now the New York managers up off the bench on his way to the mound and a change is forthcoming as that's going to do it for his starter here this evening. So he'll leave with the lead can't lose this one but he is responsible for the two runners out there so he could get a no decision if they were to come around and score. So they'll go to the bullpen now and it'll be the left hander here to face the upcoming left handed batter. Ready with the first pitch here it comes. There's the fastball that gets the lower part of the zone called for a strike. Oh, it's on the ground a second. Did he get his double play? There's one. So it's a runner at first with two men out, and that will bring up the former American League Rookie of the Year, Big Aaron Judge. Seth Lugo takes over here with a runner at first and two gone in the inning. First delivery to him on the way. Big breaker that time as it catches the inside for a called strike. This is where you got to take stock in the situation. Adjust your batting gloves and realize you need a gapper to score this guy from first. If nothing less, pass the baton to the guy behind you and keep the line moving. The 1-1 one -one is in there for the second strike. Great spot with that pitch down and away. He'll be fine coming out of the bullpen in this one if he can keep hitting that spot. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. He got him. Lively fastball that time, and it puts an end to the inning. So they pick up a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. Seventh inning stretch time here at the ballpark. The Mets lead this one 5-4. to four. 
Adam Adovino gets the call from the pen to take over on the mound and start the home seventh. Digging in and looking for more, J.D. Davis singled home a run in his last time up. Here comes the first pitch. Didn't quite catch the zone there, ball one. And that pitch misses in the dirt, and it's 2-0 and now. Good pitch there on the inside black called the strike. Just off the inside part of the plate, it's three and one. And just when you needed a shutdown inning, a leadoff walk was certainly not on the agenda. He needs a bear down right here. And that misses ball four. It's a leadoff walk to start the home seventh. Yeah, that strategy is great when it works, but when it doesn't, it's ugly. And he was here to face one guy, and he couldn't get it done. First pitch coming. Here it is. And that misses inside 1-0. And he won't bite at that one either. It's 2-0. He's going to have to have a talk with the umpire after this half inning. Because if he's not going to get those calls, he's got to come a little bit more over the heart of the plate. And that usually oh, means damage. Oh, oh. Offered out and missed. Here's the throw. It's high, but a fine play to come down with it at second. And he's out trying to steal a base. Well, they've got a small lead, and they're pushing to add to it by being aggressive on the base pass. But as a manager, you just hope you're not giving up outs that you wish you could have had back. And this one's low here, so the count swells to three and one. Line toward right center. And he will make the play out there, and there are two away now. Well, this one was squared up pretty good, but just like pitches give up hits on well executed pitches, batters make outs on balls they couldn't have hit much better. Here's the first pitch to him. Tried to golf at it, but he missed strike one. Five runs, 11 hits. One error in the game for the Mets thus far. Here's a swing and a high pop-up. Voigt is there. No trouble with this one, and the inning is over. The Mets go down quickly. They hold on to a 5-4 lead. Digging in once again, Giancarlo Stanton. Past matchups against Seth Lugo. He's gone three for 11. He's taken him deep once. Jerry Spamilia has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. He's set. Here it comes. Fouled straight back. The 0 1. And that's in there as well. 0 and 2 now. Hit in the air to shallow center. Rosario has a play. And that's the first down of the inning. Boy, he showed some pretty good range heading pretty deep into the outfield to bring that one down. Thought the outfielder might call him off, but he clearly had it under control. Into the box, Gary Sanchez. 
as it's grounded sharply to first. Smith fields it cleanly, and he'll step on first himself for the out. Stepping in, Miguel Andujar. Three at-bats for him in this one, all ending with him going down on strikes. Becomes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. And that's by him. It's 0-1. Don't kid yourself. He's well aware that he has the hat trick right now. And after that swinging. Strike. He's looking at the golden sombrero. Throw to first in plenty of time and his side is retired. So the Yanks go one two three and the deficit holds at five to four. Stephen Tarpley is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Rajay Davis is going to grab a bat here as he looks to try to set the table in the bottom of the eighth as they look for some insurance. First pitch to the 38 year old veteran is in for a called strike nothing in one. Liner towards second. Well, this will be taken in at second base good positioning for the first down. Digging in Brandon Nimmo looking to change his fortunes here 0 for 4 with two strikeouts so far in the game. He's ready. Here's the first offering. And this is just off the outside corner for a ball 1 and 0. Swing and a hard hit ball towards the hole. And now against his body, a jump throw. Throw got him and that's a gorgeous play. Well, it certainly was a bang-bang play, so no surprise here that they're giving it another look, and they may decide to challenge the call on the field. Well, I think we're going to have to wait and see what the word is from the dugout, but here's another look at it. Wow. Tough to tell if he was out for certain from that angle. I can see why this was a really tough call for the umpire. So here's the signal from the bench and they will indeed ask for that play to be reviewed. So the umpires will get on the horn with the replay operations center in Manhattan and attempt to get a definitive answer on this play. So here's one last look at that replay from another angle. There has to be indisputable evidence in order to change the call. And boy I'll tell you what I just don't see it there. I'd be pretty surprised if this challenge works out for them in this case. Headsets coming off. Here comes the decision and he is indeed out as originally called. So they lose the challenge and the ability to use any further challenges for the rest of the game. Standing in now, Jeff McNeil. As he'll watch a slider that runs out of the strike zone away for ball one. Two hits in four attempts to this point. Just a bit high with the fastball, but didn't get the call. Three and oh now. Robinson Cano would be next. Three and one to the Mets left fielder. Now that's a really curious pitch selection. 3 0 and turned to the slider. You have to wonder if maybe he's lost the feel for his fastball. Swing and a liner. Leaps and makes a terrific catch. And with that, the side is retired. Another look as he goes way up to get that one at short. More baseball on MLB Network right after this. Edwin Diaz comes on from the pen, hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. Now to the 
plate. Luke Voigt. He went down on strikes last time up. Keon Broxton is into the ball game now as he'll take over out in left field. Juan Ligares will also come in now as he takes over out in center. From the stretch. Ninth inning underway now as the first pitch is taken for a cold strike. Slider and he can't pull the trigger. Two strikes. So back to back sliders for strikes. Does he come back with yet another? There's another slider. That's back to back good sliders. And this guy's breaking ball is really good. And when he's throwing it well like he is and he's confident with it, he can throw it three or four times in a row. A really good slider in this one. You can't ask for anything more than getting a leadoff man on right there. It brings the go-ahead run to the plate. He's in position to do some damage. It'd be interesting to see how the manager plays this one. Time called here as with the potential tying run aboard, they'll make the move to get a little more speed out there. In now, Troy Tulowitzki fouled off. They'll be looking for something he could drive into the gap and drive home that tying run from first. A lot of movement that time. It's 0-2. He's going to need to shorten up and get that foot down a little bit earlier if he hopes to be catching up to that fastball. Now this is out in front. Maybe tough to get to. And he won't even think about second as he'll flip on to first for the shoe out. Play Torres as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. And the indication from the dugout comes it looks like they're going to put him on intentionally so that'll set up the double play possibility with one away. That's what's called getting the treatment. Everyone knows he's a power threat with the bat so it's all about not letting him be the guy that beats you. Austin Romine will be called upon here to hit with the game on the line. And he gets ahead here with the fastball. Strike one. Romine, a six foot one inch right handed swinger and thrower. He was taken in the second round back in the draft of 2007. Yeah, he has turned himself into a really nice ball player. I wouldn't put him on a superstar level, but you know what? They didn't miss with this pick either. You go in the high rounds and you carve out a career the way this guy has, nice pick. Got him to miss the breaking ball there. Austin Romine retired, and now they're down to their final out in this one. Classic slider down and away for the strike out there. Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand. So they end up chasing when they're in protect mode. And this ball swung on and hit to center field. And this should do it. Lagunas is there to make the catch. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, they sure made it interesting in the ninth. But they leave the tying run stranded at second. And the winning run helplessly at first. Could have gone either way. But we were treated to a great battle. This evening's game comes to an end. 5-4, the final tally. New York led this game from the third inning on and never wavered. Jacob DeGrom takes home the win. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney down on the field, and the rest of our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. Thanks for watching MLB Network.